Hi and welcome to another episode of Mr. Ford's Guide to the a Certification Exam, How to Be a Computer Technician. In this episode, we're going to take a look at chipsets. Hey and welcome back. I want to talk about chipsets. Actually, don't want to talk about them, but we have to. Very few people actually like to talk about chipsets and usually those people don't have many friends in life. But we have to know, I'm only kidding, I'm only kidding. If you like chipsets, I won't judge you. Society will, but I won't. Anyways, chipsets, the motherboard dictates what components can be used. All right, we know that the motherboard tells us what we can put on the computer, what we can use on the computer, what we can't use on the computer. It's gonna tell us what CPU we can use, what type of expansion cards, RAMs, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what the motherboard dictates. Well, if the motherboard dictates that, then the chipsets dictates to the motherboard. The chipsets is the heart of the motherboard that makes these choices. And so it's the chipsets that really determine what the motherboard can do, what it can attach to, and what it can't. Now, they're called chipsets because traditionally it was composed of two large chips, which we'll talk about in just a few seconds. If the CPU is the brains of the computer, then the chipset is the rest of the nervous system. It's going to bring information to and from the CPU. So the chipset defines the CPU type, what kind of CPU you can use. It's going to define the type of RAM and how much RAM that you can put on that motherboard. It's going to define the internal and external devices supported by that motherboard. And it's going to serve as an electronic interface among the CPU, the RAM, and I.O. devices. I.O., of course, standing for input-output devices. Now, here's a little bit of interesting trivia. Okay, I might be lying, but it's trivia nevertheless. There are lots of motherboard manufacturers. You can go online to Newegg or Tiger Direct or go to a store, Fry's or Micro Center, wherever, and you're going to find a whole bunch of different manufacturers from motherboards. In fact, go online, you're going to find a whole bunch of them. But there's actually only a few chipset manufacturers. So what winds up happening is motherboard manufacturers have to buy their chipsets from somebody else, typically, unless that company also makes the chipset, makes the motherboard. But you have lots of motherboard makers, and again, only a handful of chipset creators. So let's take a look, and you heard me talk about this in the previous video about the North Bridge and South Bridge. Let's see what these actually are. The North Bridge connects directly to the processor via a front side bus, or FSB. This is responsible for connecting high data transfer devices. It's a fast lane. It's a super highway. So think about high speed devices. Well, the RAM, that's a high speed device. You want the RAM to work. You're, you're throwing things in out of memory really quickly. You have CPUs, right? You have your processors and those need massive amounts of you know connection, connectivity. You need to communicate with them fairly quickly and PCI Express video cards. Now, if you remember, if you were paying attention in the last video, we talked about video cards and how they always push technology to the next level. And of course, we talked about PCI Express 16 being the new standard for video cards. Video cards require a lot of attention. Pretty much they're the prima donna inside your computer. And so they also get the express lane called the front side bus. So they're going to utilize the North Bridge. So a little bit more about the FSB or front side bus. It's a high speed bus that specifies the speed at which the CPU can communicate with the chipset. So think about it this way. You have the North Bridge and the front side bus. We're talking about a super highway. We're talking about an expressway. So on the expressway, if you were driving around town, you have a speed limit. This is what we're looking at here. It's how fast this communication can occur. It is the road that connects the CPU to the North Bridge. It is the highest speed bus within the computer, which makes sense because we're connecting the CPU, RAM, and of course that video card in the PCI Express world. If we have a fast lane, then we have to have the rural roads. And in this case, this would be the South Bridge. It's slower than the North Bridge, and it handles expansion devices and mass storage devices. Now, this is kind of cool. 
the hard drive has a speed, and we'll talk about hard drives in other lessons, but the hard drive really doesn't go as fast as the CPU. The CPU is running like crazy fast. Compared to the hard drive, the hard drive is driving a you know a little horse and buggy. And so it doesn't need that fast of a highway because you know what? It still takes time to retrieve that information off the hard drive. And so it can handle a slower lane. It can handle slower um, roads. So the Southbridge is going to handle the expansion devices, mass storage devices. It's in charge of secondary controllers, for example, your SATA and your USB and even more. Then we have kind of a newer world where we're seeing the North Bridge and South Bridge being replaced by something called hub architecture. Now, if you remember from the previous video where we saw the chipset, and I didn't go North Bridge or South Bridge, but just the chipset, this is what we're looking at here compared to the older pictures I showed you in the last video where we had a North Bridge and South Bridge. So hub architecture is kind of pushing them all together. And Intel, the makers of the old Pentiums and you know Intel CPUs, they use a memory controller hub, which is the MCH for the North Bridge. You have an IO controller hub, the ICH for the South Bridge. If the system has an integrated graphics, they replace the MCH with a graphics memory controller hub, or a GMCH. They might also have something called on-die North Bridge. The North Bridge functions are built directly into the processor. So you might be asking, what do I have? Well, here is a really cool way to find out what kind of chipset you have. It's a free program, which you can download and run on your computer. It's called CPU-Z, and here is the link, and I'll put the link in the description below for you to check out. So that's going to conclude our quick look at chipsets in the next video. We're going to take a look at expansion buses, so tune in for that.